Good afternoon and welcome to a webinar from Linköping University. Uh, we would like to say welcome to uh, those of you attending. Uh, this is a webinar for students who are admitted to our master's program in uh, experimental medical bioscience. Um, my name is Therese Winder and I'm a communications officer. Um, I, I work with, with supporting students who have applied uh, to, this, to this university. Um, I'm here with a few guests. Um, I'm trying to do this a bit slowly so that people can, can drop in <laughs> in their own time. Uh, but I thought we should introduce ourselves, um, those of us who are going to be, be talking to you um, for, for the next hour. We're going to start off having a, a, a general conversation about what it's like to study here and expectations, and, and then we're going to open up for, for questions, uh, which we will answer in the Q&A section. Uh, but let's start with Iris, who's a current student. Hi, um, I'm Iris and I am originally from Austria and I am enrolled in the double degree program. So I started in Austria and I'm now studying my final year in my master's in Sweden, but we'll talk about this later. Thank you. Jordi? Yes, my name is Jordi Altimiras. I am the course director for this international master program. Uh, so it's really a pleasure to be with you today and to basically tell you a little bit about uh, what uh, we are thinking and hopefully getting some of uh, your questions and try to answer them. Thank you. And finally, Daniel. Yeah, I'm Daniel Antonsson. Daniel Antonsson. And I'm the study counselor at the program. Uh, I will, of course, be helping you with some uh, different questions uh, during your stay and during your way into LIU. So I'm kind of support function as well as three as mentioned before. So yeah. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with Iris. Um, let's start with just asking you. Um, you, you didn't do your first year here, uh, but you did, you did arrive a year ago uh, this, well, August uh, a year ago, six months ago, maybe. Um, what was your impression? Um, my impression of um, Lin Shopping and the uni in general was that it was, it was so friendly and open and um, the people were so nice, especially the introductionary week. We did have um, a welcome period as well um, since we were double degree students together with the first years. Um, so I got to experience that and it was such a um, nice welcome. Um, we, I remember that we were picked up from the train station with an LIU bus. We arrived on one of the arrival days that were scheduled. So a bus picked us up from the train station, brought us to the uni where we got um, to register um, and were then transferred to our student housing. So it was really pleasant. Okay, great. Um, how how would you say? Um, I mean, obviously, you you didn't you didn't have to do the roll call um, as as the first year students who who have to attend roll call, and this is a very important point. Uh, but when you first arrived, you what was the first thing you did? So you arrived, you got the the little shuttle service, and then you found your accommodation. But then you got to the university. What was what was the first thing? The first steps that you need to take. Actually, we did have a roll call. Um, it was just for the double degree students. Um, we got to meet our mentors for this year since we are also doing our degree project um, now. So our master thesis kind of um, at LIU and um, got to know our mentors, which are um, professors kind of um, that um, like, I think it's two for each year that um, you can go to with specific questions about your studies, about your project, and they kind of keep an eye on you, which was really nice. And we got to meet them, um, got an introduction. I think we also met Daniel um, and introduced us, um, introduced himself and his role and Yodi. Um, 
Great, great. What was your, what, what what have you found to be the the main differences uh, between studying your your degree here and and in 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 Austria in your case? So um, in Sweden, or at least at Linköping University, um, the um, each course is split into many different parts. Um, so I took four courses per semester for the first semester I was here. Um, and each of the courses consisted of lectures, um, laboratories. Um, then we had tutorial groups, which are a group of, let's say, five to ten students with one mentor that um, does research in this area. Um, where we could discuss certain cases, um, um, for example, read a research paper or try to discuss a molecular mechanism. And then we also had a literature study where we um, got the topic and had to write a short research paper, kind of, um, which taught us a lot about how to write um, and what is important in research. So I really liked that the courses were split into so many different parts. And in Austria, we rather have more courses um, that are not as connected with each other, but only consist of one or two elements. And here I really enjoy how every course and every topic is continuously uh, repeated. Um, so you actually learn a lot um, about um, each topic, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, that's really it's it's really interesting to hear hear your your perspective as a as a double degree student. Um, what are the kind of I'd say what have been the challenges uh, of of studying abroad in Nijapit? Um, for us, it was um, also that we came during the pandemic um, and tried to do an Erasmus where it was like still kind of new. Nobody knew whether we could actually go. So it was around a year ago in beginning of April when they decided that Linköping University will take students from both um, technical university Krems and IMC Krems where I am from. And there, there was, it was chaotic in the beginning because nobody knew exactly what was going to happen. Um, there was also transition between program directors um, and at LIU. So that at first we got to know Katarina Kagedal and talk to her a lot, um, but she um, left her position in summer, I think. Um, that was also um, difficult for us since we switched a person who we can talk to and who did our, like we, I had my interview with Katarina um, and then coming here and everything being different, not knowing exactly what are the restrictions, what are the rules, Austria being very different in their approach um, than Sweden is. So it was a lot of tiny things that um, changed over a short period of time um, but I'm really glad that I um, had so much support from both universities the communication was really good and when we arrived here we were welcomed with open arms and um, kind of guided on our very first steps so we didn't miss anything and um, we always had someone to talk to which was very nice. That's really nice. It sounds really nice and positive. Um, Jordi, I'd, I'd like to kind of hear your perspective on, on kind of well, the first few weeks for um, the new students. So they arrive and, and we talked about this roll call. And again, I really need to emphasize how important it is that they attend the roll call. Um, but what, what other kind of, um, what expectations do you have that they should do, um, especially during those first few weeks? Well, the, the, the expectations are high from both sides, I guess. Um, 
most many students move from another country and move here, and that's a big change, that's a big switch. At the same time, we want to put pride on our on the academic excellence of our program, which means that uh, from day one, uh, students are expected to perform and do well. And um, so in reality, my message to you guys out there is that the more you prepare ahead of time, the better the whole transition will go. Uh, you will notice that uh, the roll call will be on Thursday. The date is already decided. The, the day after, we will have a seminar on cultural intelligence, and that will be on Friday. So the next Monday, the course starts, and you start with two obligatory courses, and you are expected to, to work hard from day one. Arriving late is a major hinder. Students that arrive late have a hard time catching up uh, and basically if not if not arriving late but arriving the last couple of days and you have not sorted out your living quarters or there's still other issues pending of course there's a lot that uh, that piles up so i think that the recommendation that we have is come to sweden in the middle of august get yourself give yourself time to know the city to know where you're going you are going to start your first, the first two obligatory, two obligatory courses are given in, two, in both campuses. Part of the courses are given at the medical faculty campus or at the hospital campus. And the other part is given at the technical campus. So that's a little bit more of a challenge for you. So by all means, try to come here in the middle of August, not wait until the last day, because that is when you start things uphill and we want you to come here and get things going downhill because the academic performance is important but that will be expected from day one. Mm -hmm. Thank you this this kind of preparedness is, is something I've heard from from other students uh, and not just when it comes to arriving but also during during the course and and Daniel do, do you want to explain a bit more what a, what a study counselor does and what you can do for the students? Yeah, yes, I think if if my role uh, does exist at other universities around the world, I think it's more of a study advisor, uh, giving advice to, during your studies uh, connected to, to the topics that you that you are studying. But in this case, I'm a study counselor. I'm more of a support person during your time, during your uh, as a like a student. And this is, uh, of course, uh, right now, I'm also the uh, contact uh, person, you can say, to the admission process, to, to when you are like finding the website on net, you can see my uh, email and you can contact me with whatever question. And I will try to find the right staff, the right person to, to re re redirect it to, to, if possible, if needed. So this is, uh, and during the time you studies, you can, see me for like set times for a meeting a phone call or email to ask questions that has to do with your studies but more of a planning stay, stage or or to to work with techniques or to reorganize maybe your 24 hour uh, plan for the day and so on so mm -hmm. that's what are your what are your tips for, for for doing this you know planning your studies and to successfully what what kind of you know you're talking about study plan or a 24-hour plan what are your tips it is hard really to to, to say what is what it uh showed from the hip like you say uh, <laughs> but you can say like different for different people is the, the easy answer to that, but it's also the hard answer because it depends really. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that we could discuss that uh, if you have uh, uh, concerns about this, uh, it's maybe hard to, to like, like uh, figure out my, my, my exact uh, role, but my wish is that you just feel free to contact me, of course. And I can try to help you with whatever question. So this is 
as long as you're there like <laughs> Daniel is your go-to man um, yeah, you know, yeah. the fixer no <laughs> no but it's 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 really good because you know I've 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 spoken to others and and it, it does you know it is a a, a of kind of full-on program it is it is 40 hours per week um so so I think you do need to be to be organized um what about group work Iris um Iris uh, how would you like me to say it Iris or Iris Iris. Iris. <laughs> Iris. Um, how, I mean, there's a, there's a fair amount of group work. I think that's a Swedish thing. Um, how, yeah. What's your take been on that? Um, at first it was, um, it took me quite a while to get used to it since the setup of the group work is very different to what I know. And since we didn't start with the first year, um, but like jumped in the middle <laughs> into the whole um, like program, it was at first a little bit difficult to um, get to know um, how we should work with the others um, since they learned this latest beginning of their masters. So it is probably easier for those who are watching since you start with the first year. Um, but we were guided along the way um, by other students, by the mentors on how this is done and how is it done effectively. And the first um, one to three um, sessions were not as productive, um, at least for me, as I would have wished they were. Um, but um, it taught me a lot on how I can work differently in a group discuss in a group also regarding topics i don't know much about where do i start to read upon topics i don't know much about and so in in total i was very pleased with the experience and um got a lot on how also i can now implement in my master thesis mm -hmm. from this Mm, very good. Uh, and, and Georgie, the, the group work aspect, I mean, is that a big part of the program? And, and how do you, uh, you know, students who have a background in, in, say, you know, a lot more teacher led teaching where, you know, you, you, you sit and listen a lot. And in Sweden, you, you have a lot more you're expected to contribute. Um, yeah. Now, this is this is a very Swedish thing, I'd say, uh, and that's what we hear from the international students that it takes a while to adapt to that way of thinking, in which uh, uh, quite a few assignments are actually group assignments. The students are expected to collaborate and work with each other, and that's a little bit of a shock for those that have not performed that. Uh, we receive many students, not all, but many students that come from universities where uh, the layout is uh, more like going attending lectures and then taking exams and also many times having some laboratory work but uh, re relatively uncoupled from each other uh, the layout here is slightly different of course there are lectures but then there are lots of tutorial groups there are seminars for discussion discussion of our scientific articles and other things and then there are labs and a lot of these other activities are performed in groups the students work in smaller groups groups of three groups of four groups of eight uh, and that requires collaboration, cooperation. Uh, and of course, if you're not used to that, that uh, takes a while. But in general, what Iris is saying, and I, I have heard that before from many others, once you get the hang of it, then you start liking it because it's not like it's always up to you. I mean, you learn a lot from others. The concept of peer instruction, uh, which is one of the, of the buzzwords also in the work or in the in the work of uh, high school education at, at the moment basically meaning that you know you can learn from your peers as much as you can learn from your professors and of course one thing does not discard the other i think that that's what is intended with this type of group work which can be shocking at times but uh, what we see is the students get used to it very quickly it's just that it's not what some of them uh, some of you bring here when you come they are, you you probably come here for academic excellence because you want to know more you because you are ambitious you want to do a phd program or, or other reasons uh, but usually the main reason why you come here is not that you want to collaborate in groups but that's one of the things that you are going to end up doing mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, how, uh, I suppose, Daniel, you come in here. I mean, you, you provide support for those students who, who find this quite difficult? Of course, this can be a discussion issue uh, with students. Uh, sometimes it's like some of the students know that this is the case, the problem-based learning and everything, and some of them don't just uh, end up in a group, tutorial group or something like that. And this is also like individual, of course, and if this uh, like really goes being a great problem like in to, to work in groups or something like that it's we also have the student health center so uh, this is a possibility as well if you don't feel well like this is also also that's something that Lee, uh, LIU provides to you so this is not really my uh, my area but of course we can discuss how to work in a group uh, can we discuss this uh, with your group members with your um, tutorial uh, uh, supervisor or tutorial mm -hmm. group supervisor or something like that so we can have these discussions of course uh, great great um you mentioned something and maybe georgie can pick up on that one problem-based learning what is it can you just explain that yes uh no I, i'm not gonna say because that's not would not would not be true our by international master program is not based on problem-based learning however lots of things in the courses happen using a problem-based learning methodology. A, pro a problem-based learning methodology requires that students work together to solve a problem. And this problem could be a clinical case or it could be a, a laboratory problem. Or, so basically, in, in it's just the students have to face a more real life situation to actually discuss how to proceed, how to work, and that can, of course, in a biomedical context, it essentially means how do we tackle a given question? Uh, how do cancer cells do this or do that? How can we study that uh, in the laboratory, as an example? So the courses actually take uh, both basic research perspective and clinical scenarios as uh, the, 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 the main learning uh, aspects to pick up. And in a problem-based learning scenario, when you are handed this type of problem, it's group work that is supposed to be done in order to come up with a solution, we can say. Or, and this solution can be in the form of writing a short report or designing a laboratory experiment, these kind of things. And it's obviously through the interaction and collaboration with other students that can, can be achieved. So our program is not a PBL, problem-based learning program, but many of our courses use problems as a way to learn. Mm. Our medical school is well characterized for PBL. Uh, so our program has taken a lot of learning from that, but we are not a PBL uh, biomedical master. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, the, the relationship with with fellow students. I mean, we've, we've touched upon that. You know, group work, the importance of being you know prepared so that you you can contribute, but also being prepared to to listen to your your group members. Um, what about the the relationship with with staff members, uh, Iris? Is that you know has that been different here compared to to what you're used to? Extremely. In, in Austria, we value our hierarchy and our professors are only approached with the title and their surname. So when we came here and were, um, it was normal to talk to um, the professors or your teachers with their first name. It, to it took me like two weeks to get used to that. <laughs> it felt so weird, but um, coming from my um, like background with having to use title and surname, um, I still find that there is a hierarchy. I don't know if you have a different background, how um, this then seems to you, but for me, there's still, um, those are still my teachers. Those are still my professors. I talk um, with 
like very politely to them, but I use their first names, um, which is weird at times, but um, I like that um, it is, um, you're seen as equal still, um, even though you're still learning and you're a student, um, but this kind of taught me that I not only can learn something from my teachers, but also from fellow students. Um, in this way, it eliminated this and these differences and um, made it um, more approachable to learn, learn from everyone, basically. Mm -hmm. Jordi, I mean, you're from, you're originally from Spain. How do you find this context? I mean, how, how do you balance the, the, the kind of, you know, the camaraderie or the first name basis with the need for, you know, the respect that you should have for your teachers? Well, I, I, I've been, a, I'm a globetrotter for science. I have spent, after I finished my PhD, yes, you're right, in Spain, I moved around. I spent quite a few years as a postdoc in different countries, um, the United States, uh, uh, Sweden, and Denmark. I took a position at the medical faculty in Portugal, which is also a very hierarchical society, particularly in academia. And then I came to Sweden. So I've been exposed to a whole bunch of different academic traditions, if we want to call it this way. Um, I, I just, I've never understood the problem really. To me, there is none. Uh, I know who I am and my students know who they are and who I am. Uh, what's the problem? That they mm. call me and that I ask the students to call me Jordi does not mean that I am feel less or more than them. I mean, basically, we are in a reciprocal uh, situation. I am a teacher. I have to teach. That's my profession. That's my job. And I do that with the best of my knowledge. And I expect my students to do exactly the same in the most professional way. Uh, how they call me or what our relationship, what, how does our relationship look like does not mean that uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I would win much by being called like many of the students call me from the beginning and it takes a while, Professor Altimiras, because that's what they are used when they come here. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, we are not making a big deal out of that, but I mean, my name is Jordi and I like to be called that way in the same way that I will call my students for their first name. Um, if it's an issue, well, we can change that. I mean, we are, as I, as I pointed out, the first Friday that the course has started or the program has started, we have a workshop seminar on cultural intelligence. And that's exactly what we talk about. How do we work to accept each other and understand where we come from and work with that? And the premise that our instructor in that workshop has is that multidisciplinary or multicultural teams are much stronger, perform better and produce better. And this is basically our goal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Um, before we move on, because uh, I think we should open up for questions uh, from the, 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 the viewers who are with us. Um, it is, do you have any kind of, just just one thing, what, what do you wish, oh, I wish I had known this, or I wish I had done that before coming here? Um, I was thinking for quite a while about this question. Um, and there is not much I could come up with. I, I was very well directed when I came here and we got a lot of info documents and there's a lot of things on the YouTube channel and on the website. But one thing that would help me a lot in the beginning was that there is an app um, from LIU where you can um, find the room where your lecture is. Because most of the rooms on campus US are, so that's a medical campus, um, are named after like animals or bird, um, trees or stones in Swedish. I didn't understand, I couldn't put them anywhere. Um, so I only found out later that this app exists. And that was very helpful because you get your map where you are and where you have to go. And that's oh. really nice. That's a good tip. I didn't know that. That's a really good tip. Because yes, it can be a bit, I mean, even the campus of Allah can be a bit of a maze as well, trying to, to find, find your way around. Um, thank you. Um, let's go to the Q&A. But before we do so, um, 
I think I forgot to mention at the beginning that this this webinar is being recorded, and uh, but only this part that we've we've just uh, listened to will be recorded, and the Q and A session is only for those of you who are here live. So with Having said this, I'd like to say thank you and goodbye to those of you who have joined us uh, watching the recording. <laughs>